Hey guys, I'm Kevin Liz with a wedding photographer based in San Diego. And today I have got a very special video because I've got a guest here with me today. Well, not here with me physically, but virtually I am interviewing a real weddings editor from the knot. And we are going to be talking about getting your wedding published. So whether you are a bride or groom or you are a vendor, we are going to be talking about the ins and outs of getting published as well as some tips on how to do so. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. Video. Hello everyone, I have got Hannah here with me from The Knot and Hannah is the weddings editor from The Knot and she is amazing. I had the pleasure of meeting her when I was in New York for Bridal Fashion Week. You guys have seen um, some of the content that I've shown you guys, some of the gowns that I bought while I was there and Hannah is amazing. She has a um, big background in the wedding industry and so Hannah, why don't you just tell us um, what you do now, what you've done in the past what your background is in bridal and just a little bit about yourself. Yes, I'd love to. Well, first, just thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to chat with you today and um, all your followers. But yeah. yeah, so as you mentioned, I'm Hannah. I'm the Real Weddings Editor at The Knot. I've been with The Knot for about two years, but I have been in the wedding space for a lot longer um, than that. My Actually, my background is in wedding planning. That's how I first got my start in the industry, but have always loved storytelling and had a knack for words. So kind of pivoted over, over to the editorial sphere a number of years ago, um, working at some other publications and then, yeah, found my home at The Knot where I am now. And I oversee all of the weddings that we feature both in print and um, online and we can obviously get into that more, but um, yeah, that's a little bit about me. But I'd love to sort of set the scene for like what our real weddings are and kind of why we have them on The Knot. Mm -hmm. um, the Knot as a whole's mission is to help all couples plan a wedding that is uniquely their own. And our real wedding features are one of our editorial pillars that help support that overall mission. And that's just through us showcasing the weddings uh, couples that have taken place in real life as opposed to like styled shoots um, that do really reflect their relationships and that personalization. And so that's kind of why we um, even have real weddings. Um, but mm -hmm. yeah. And so those real weddings do come to us from submissions, as you mentioned. And for us, like the biggest way that we accept them is through a platform called Two Bright Lights. It's a vendor facing platform where photographers and planners can upload galleries of images from weddings that they've done and then submit those to us for consideration. So I'd say that's the main way that we encourage um, submissions. Okay, great. You uh, used to work at Martha Stewart, right? Correct. Okay. So that would be like another place. Um, what would you say are some of the other like top places that brides or um, vendors could submit to? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in terms of other publications, there are like a number of different um, publications in the wedding space. I would say a lot of them nowadays are mostly digital. Um, like you mentioned, Martha and Brides and Style Me Pretty are a handful of ones. Um, but something that we love at The Knot that really sets us apart is that we have both print and digital um, mm -hmm. content. And so that's kind of something that is really unique for um, couples that get featured with us is that they, you know, there is the chance to be featured in a print magazine um, as opposed to just only digital coverage. And for a lot of places, um, I know you can kind of submit directly to them. For the not, you guys use the Two Bright Lights platform. Um, can couples submit uh, for that or is that vendor only for Two Bright Lights? Yeah, that's a great question. So we do um, really prefer for vendors to submit. Um, and yeah, Two Bright Lights is a vendor only platform. And a big reason that we encourage vendors to submit is just um well one that you know we need the photographer's permission to be able to use these images and um, streamlining through two bright lights kind of helps us with the photo release and also a lot of times you know the vendors will know where maybe 
as we were mentioning, there are other publications. They're able to kind of keep track of if the wedding has been submitted elsewhere or the planner can make sure to get us a full v vendor list. And so it's kind of a win-win for um, everybody for us to focus on having vendors submitting. Um, but we really do also ask, you know, kind of for it to be a team effort because, you know, once a wedding would be accepted, there is still, um, something that couples need to do, which would be to fill out a questionnaire. So even though we encourage vendors to be the ones submitting, we do really want it to be something that is done hand in hand with couples, um, knowing that, you know, there's going to be some tasks for each person to, com um, to complete. And so just making sure to kind of connect before you launch into the submission process is really a great thing to do. Okay, great. Um, so what is the difference in submitting to print versus a blog? Talk a little bit about what it means to be in print versus what it means to be on a blog. For sure. Yeah. So, well, for us, um, honestly, we're kind of looking for very similar things, both in our digital features and in print. Um, we kind of have this phrase that we throw around internally, which is your wedding, your way, which is just my team's way of kind of reminding ourselves of that emphasis that we place on personalization, um, that we're looking for in weddings. And so that really rings true, both of the weddings that we're reviewing for digital and for print. But I would say the biggest difference is just the cadence. Um, our print magazine comes out four times a year. Whereas our digital real weddings, we're publishing new ones every single week. And on digital, we're probably publishing between like three to five new weddings a week. Whereas in print, we only feature five real weddings um, in each of those four. So, you know, only 20 weddings across the whole year. And we also really want to balance a variety of styles and locations and couples, even though we're really looking for similar things on print and on digital. The biggest thing is just space um, that kind of contributes to potentially something being chosen for print um, versus being chosen for digital. Do you feel like a wedding has to be a little bit more like special or meaningful or impactful to be in print over a blog? Um, I mean, I would, I would say, you know, we really want that personalization and like those unique details. And when a wedding feels like, you know, through looking at the images, you can really see the couple story reflected through that. Like those are the weddings that really pique our interest and really shine. Um, mm -hmm. and also something I forgot to mention is with our print weddings, um, we do actually put them online once the magazine goes okay. live. So that's also kind of an added bonus of your wedding will live on online beyond the three months that the magazine is on stands. Um, so you okay. kind of actually get the best of both worlds. Got it. Okay. So you kind of get a bonus of getting yeah. on the blog as well. That's, that's really nice because I always feel like if you only got print, then like once it's off newsstands, it's kind of gone forever. Whereas if you get on the blog, like it lives on and you get for people who know like what SEO is, like you get that SEO for forever. So that's kind of nice that you get both. What makes a wedding likely to get published versus not getting published? So like when you receive a submission and you're in box or through two bright light lights, um, when you're looking at it and you're seeing it and you're saying, okay, this is going to get published. This is not going to get published. What is that deciding factor for you? Or what are some of the deciding factors? Cause there might be multiple reasons why something might not get picked up. I would love to hear the reasons. Definitely. Yeah. There are a couple of things I'd love to chat about. Um, firstly that we really look for exclusive weddings. Um, we ask that a, when a wedding is submitted to us, it not have been featured elsewhere. Um, and I know that also sometimes there can be confusion over different publications, exclusivity policies. And so at the not, we just simply ask that your wedding not be featured with another publication until the feature goes live. And then for three months thereafter, okay. but what that doesn't mean is that you are precluded from posting on your own social media. You know, we know that couples are excited to share these images with their friends and photographers want to be able to share on their Instagram. And, and we love that. We want you to be able to share 
your special day. And so, um, you know, you don't need to keep these images under lock and key on personal platforms until the feature goes live. We're just, we just ask that you don't share it with another publication or um, journalistic outlet. And then another factor I would say, and this is, you know, something we've kind of touched on already, but just that personalization and those details are, mm -hmm. features are fairly detail heavy. And we really like for everything in the wedding to really reflect the couple. So maybe they let their hobbies or their interests or just kind of whatever is important to them inspire the wedding and sort of their relationship served as the inspiration for the wedding. Those are the mm -hmm. types of weddings that really excite us and kind of going to make the cut versus maybe a wedding that is beautiful and following trends, but isn't sort of the embodiment of the couple's story. Um, those are the ones that maybe wouldn't be quite as good of a fit for us. Got it. Okay. And then how often do you get a wedding where it's really pretty and there's great details, but the photography is really lackluster and you deny it because of the photography? That's a good question. So I think there are kind of two ways to think about this. Of One, there are obviously like a lot of different styles of photography um, mm -hmm. and that wouldn't necessarily be something that stops us from accepting a wedding. You know, we're just as likely to accept like a, film photographer's wedding versus maybe someone that um, is a little bit more like dark and moody. You know, we definitely showcase a lot of different styles of weddings, but mm -hmm. um, it does still need to, you know, be well photographed. Um, right. Yeah. I mean, there definitely have been times, I guess, where I can tell it's a beautiful wedding, but because these features are so visually driven, they do need, you know, the images to support that out of curiosity for me how long on average do you have to look at a submission before you know whether or not you're gonna take it like how many minutes would you say or seconds even i have a different question that i get asked a lot is how many submissions i get and i yeah. also never used to know the answer to that question until i started tracking recently yeah. and it averages to about 200 weddings a month at least okay um, that i'm looking through. So yeah, I mean, I think I would say the ones that are like seriously in the running are ones that, you know, within 20 seconds of looking at a gallery, just like I feel connected to and they really like pop. Um, but so I'd say I do get kind of like a first instinct pretty quickly. Um, mm -hmm. But I do, I kind of like to look at a wedding and then come back to it. Um, and give it like a second look with some fresh eyes before making a firm decision, you know, just so that okay. I'm not kind of making one off the cuff. I look at a lot of weddings. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's an exciting part of my job, um, definitely. But there are a lot that come through, which is a great problem to have. This was a question that some people wanted to know. Are high-end weddings more likely to be published than non-high-end weddings? Hmm. I would say that's definitely not the case with us. Um, mm -hmm. We actually don't even ask like what someone's budget is and when in our submission process. Um, and you know, I would say like a backyard wedding uh, or like a private residence wedding is just as likely to get featured with us as, you know, a really high budget wedding. Again, a big thing that we care about is like that personalization and that a mm -hmm. couple's story is the main source of their inspiration. And I think, you know, no matter your budget level, those things can hold true. So we definitely feature kind of weddings that run the gamut in terms of budget, but also, as I mentioned, like style and location and even, yeah, just one or two magazines ago, there was this beautiful backyard Texas wedding that was very small, very intimate. You could really see the couple at the center of the day. And that that was what sort of made my team fall in love with that wedding. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. We've well, kind of already touched on this a little bit. Um, I, the question was like, do you only take weddings submitted by vendors? Um, can couples submit? So you already kind of mentioned that through two bright lights, that's something that vendors submit through. Um, so couples can't submit through that, correct? Correct. Yeah. 
Okay, great. So if a bride or a groom wanted to have their wedding submitted through the knot, they would need to get their photographer to submit to you. And um, so obviously that would, they would already have their photographer's permission. Um, so they need to get their photographer to submit to you. Generally in the submission world, through all of your experience, the places that you've worked, do you feel like um, outside of the knot and two bright lights, do you feel like a wedding is more likely to be picked up by a blog if it is submitted by a vendor versus a couple? Or do you feel like it makes no difference? I don't know that yet who's submitting it changes necessarily the likelihood of whether or not it's submitted because you know we really like to take the wedding itself at face value um and not you know lean into any like favoritism of who's submitting but mm -hmm. yeah that being said more just for our process um is like the reason that we prefer the vendors submitting um because it just does kind of make it a more seamless process but i don't mm -hmm. i don't think that it necessarily makes it more likely to get accepted yeah. Um, you talked a little bit about having the vendor list. That's one thing that I find um, even a lot of photographers don't know about. They don't ask their couples for a vendor list. And so when I see photographers posting photos on Instagram, they're not crediting hardly anybody all the time. Um, I also own a bridal boutique and our bridal boutique is almost never tagged by photographers on Instagram. And it is extremely frustrating. I'm constantly like, oh, like, can you please tag us? And they're like, oh, sorry, I didn't know like who the gal was by. And I'm like, why aren't you asking your brides for a vendor list? Like I ask all my brides through a like wedding questionnaire for their vendors so that I know when I'm submitting or when I'm posting on social media, you know, who to credit, because I think that that's the right thing to do. Um, so I guess I would encourage brides make some sort of vendor list to give to your vendors, to give to your photographer, or if your planner has something like this, ask them for it so you can give it to your photographer so that somebody has it. Um, because having this list of vendors is super valuable. Um, I feel like that's so important in these days to be able to credit people. I just wanted to put that out there because yeah. no yeah, for sure I, to I totally agree with that and I think that's also a reason why it's like so important to go through the submission process like in tandem um, as a team because even if like the photographer is the one handling the images as you said they might not know all the vendors um, and even you know if a couple has hired a full service wedding planner like the couple might not even know yeah. all of all of the vendors, you know, maybe there were linen vendors or tabletop yeah. vendors. It's that, always the like, rentals. Yeah, they didn't really, you know, know the full list. And so I think kind of getting the key players involved that know the different um, things that need to be accounted for to make sure that like the submission is complete and robust and reflecting everybody that contributed to the wedding's hard work is great. And yeah, to your point, kind of putting together a one cheater that even, you know, might have, um, the Instagram handles of everybody, yes. because then, you know, if you're sharing around some sneak peek images that you're happy to have all those vendors share, you also want everybody to be credited. And so for them to be able to copy and paste and know that this is a comprehensive list of everybody that helped bring this day together, like that's a really great suggestion. Mm -hmm. Great. And then um, my last big question has to do with the images that are submitted. Um, one of the things that I was really honing for a long time was curating the right set of images, like whether it was the amount or which images to share. So whether it's a couple submitting somewhere or a vendor submitting somewhere, can you talk a little bit about the type of images to show like what kinds of images you want to see and which images don't really need to be in a submission gallery? Definitely. Yeah. So, well, first off, you kind of mentioned number and I would say we do ask for like at least 50 images like that's kind of the minimum to feel like we're getting a sense of the full day and when it comes to what images are you know within that 50 or more images i'd say we want to see a pretty 
robust representation of the full day from start to finish. So, you know, getting ready images and the ceremony, cocktail hour and reception through the end of the night. And just kind of thinking through like, well, what were the big things that happened or like the notable details or like um, special things that the couple brought into the day and then making sure that there's that represented through photos. Um, mm -hmm. I would say, as I've mentioned before, like our features at the knot specifically are fairly detail heavy. So yeah. you know, I think you can be a little bit more selective when it comes to which portraits you're including. It's really mm -hmm. lovely to see the couple and if they had a wedding party, um, but you don't necessarily need like all of the extended family portraits or things like that like those aren't gonna you know end up in the feature and so mm -hmm. you don't need to sort of spend time toying over whether or not to include those but yeah i would say kind of a comprehensive representation of like how the day flowed is a really great way to think about like what needs to be included um, in that gallery that you're submitting i think i've also heard in the past um concern over like oh you know, I don't know, that I'm like Oz with this like checklist of you have to have all these things and that if you don't have a cake or a stationary flat lay or something like something specific, then it's automatically going to be a no. Yeah. And I'll say that def like I want to debunk that um, rumor. Because, okay. You know, the reality is like, yes, we feature right re pretty regularly like a beautiful cake because a lot of couples have cakes, but not all couples include a cake and, you know, and so um, they might not even have dessert. They might prefer savory things or, you know, there were kind of at the height of some of the mini monies early in COVID when um, just a lot of weddings were pared down. There, there were kind of fewer details. Um, you know, maybe they ended up having to change the date a ton of times and did most of their communication over email. So like, there's not going to be pictures of that. And while I love and will swoon over stationary all day, every day, like if there happens to not be tons of stationary from a wedding, that's not going to be an automatic no. Um, okay. and so, yeah, there isn't sort of this checklist in the background. That's like, okay, they need to have X, Y, and Z. I, I think it's just having details that represent what was really present at the day. Um, you know whether or not the couple chose to include various specific elements okay and did you find that true also at your past positions or is this just something that you're like you find at the knot yeah i would say this is kind of how i do it at the knot i can't necessarily speak to how things were done or maybe have like shifted okay. in coverage um since then but um yeah at least for my team we don't necessarily have a specific checklist. Is there anything else that you would like to share, whether it's for couples trying to get their wedding published or for photographers out there who are maybe struggling to get their weddings published and have been getting rejected? Um, because I, like early on in my career, I was getting rejected, especially from the top blogs over and over and over again. And it was really discouraging until I like started finally getting accepted. Um, so is there anything that you would like to share for photographers or couples? Sure. Yeah. Um, there's something I'd love to share for couples and um, something else for the industry. I would say for couples, you know, being featured is a really great thing. But, you know, as you're in the midst of wedding planning, don't sort of like make that the ultimate goal. Um, I, I mean, obviously, like I love looking through real weddings. That's my entire job. But ultimately like your wedding is the beginning of your like a new stage in your relationship with your partner and allowing that to be what's inspiring every wedding decision is like so much more impactful than kind of thinking oh well like what color palette do we choose oh i don't like which one is going to make the not more interested in my wedding like yeah <laughs> that shouldn't be sort of your mindset um especially because you know even like i said like we want weddings that are really reflective of the couple and if all these decisions are just being made so that you hope that it's what i'm looking for and my team like that i don't know i would encourage that to not be the mindset but really rather like take stock of 
you, your partner, your relationship, and then let that be um, what's kind of inspiring every decision. And then on the flip side for pros that are submitting, um, I would just encourage you not to get discouraged and to keep submitting, you know, like as we discussed at the beginning of this interview, like for print, I only accept five weddings um, per quarter for print. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, this term like the wedding boom has been thrown around and a mm -hmm. submissions boom. I'm getting more submissions than ever. And they're all beautiful, amazing couples. And um, the reality is just that all publications have limited editorial calendars. Um, and so, yeah, I would just not get discouraged if, you know, one wedding wasn't a fit. Um, that doesn't mean that another wedding isn't going to be. So just keep submitting. Um, and persevering because editors like myself like want to see your weddings you know um and so yeah just i would say to not get discouraged okay and then tell everybody where they can find the knot um on instagram and where they can find you on instagram um the knot on instagram is at the knot and our real weddings um you can find those at the knot.com backslash real dash weddings um that's mm -hmm. where those all live online. And then, yeah, my personal Instagram is just at Hannah Nowak. Love to connect with all of you online and um, on Instagram. Fabulous. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me today and sharing your insight and everybody go submit to the knot. And um, I have a feature coming out next month. Um, thank you, Hannah, for accepting it. It's going to be a really pretty one. So I'm super excited and um, we will see you guys next week. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. If you guys did enjoy this video, please be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys next week. Bye.